is risen. Thank you all for coming and worshiping with us today on this Easter Sunday, the most important day of the whole year, the day that we celebrate the fact that Jesus lives. Uh, so we're going to begin by standing up and greeting one another and sharing this good news. And then remain standing for the processional. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. The light that brings us victory over death. Now heaven and earth, even all of creation, rejoice with the eternal darkness has been defeated. Rejoice, brothers and sisters in Christ, both here and around the world. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Hallelujah.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We cannot enter God's presence without Christ's victory. Our sinful condition falls short of the glory of God. Let us therefore give voice to those sins, confessing our faults and failures to one another and to God himself. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved them with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight to your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Rejoice and be glad. God has not merely overlooked your faults. He has not missed your failures. And he knows the frailty of the human condition. Rather, he became one of us in Jesus, whose cross paid for every sin of yours and the whole world. Jesus not only paid the penalty, on this day our Heavenly Father proclaimed to all the world that he accepted the payment. Your sins are forgiven indeed. In the stead, and by the command of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection. May be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading today from Isaiah chapter 25. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God, we have waited for him, that he might save us. This is the Lord, we have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord.
Our epistle reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried and that he was offered, raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Seth Cephas and then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one and timely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believe. This is the word of the Lord.
Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. You may be seated. 
The text for our consideration is the gospel reading from Mark with a reference to Luke's account of the Passion as well. May the Holy Spirit bless us with greater faith to embrace the paradox of life coming forth from death. Are you looking for it? The criminal crucified next to Jesus, he was looking for it. Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the Jewish ruling council, was looking for it. Nathaniel, sitting under a fig tree, was looking for it. Are you looking for it? I'm talking about the kingdom of Christ, the kingdom of heaven, the promised place of paradise. That criminal on the cross next to Jesus, having repented of mocking Jesus, chided the other criminal who continued to rail against Jesus. You remember what he said. He said, we are getting what our deeds deserve, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. A man dying on a cross believed that Jesus, who was also being crucified, was a king. And that criminal was looking forward to Jesus' kingdom. You remember Jesus' response. I know you do. He said, truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Wow, a condemned criminal being crucified, hanging on a cross one moment, experiences the kingdom of paradise just a short time thereafter. Joseph of Arimathea, he was one of the few that went against the peer pressure of the majority of the Sanhedrin, for he believed that Jesus was innocent of the charges. And we are told just a few verses before our text that Joseph of Arimathea was also himself looking for the kingdom of God. And so he took courage and went to Pontius Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. And then he buried his Lord Jesus Christ in his own freshly cut tomb. So I ask you again, Are you looking for it? Really looking for it? The very kingdom of God. The amazing truth is that the kingdom of God is found in the paradox before us this day. The kingdom of God is found in life coming forth from death. This is true spiritually, day by day, as new life comes forth in our lives out of the death of sin. Sin is death. Sin destroys life. Our sins laid upon Jesus Christ on the cross brought death to the living Son of God. Death by crucifixion. Yet, my dear friends, on this day, so many years ago, that tomb was empty and life came forth from death by the power of Christ's resurrection. For Christ is risen. He is risen Hallelujah. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Christ our Lord has won the victory over both sin and death. Sin and death do not reign over us because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ which brings forth life from the death of our own sins. By the power of God's Spirit we die and rise day by day in Christ, dying to sin, rising to a life of holiness, dying to greed, 
rising to a life of generosity, dying to immorality in all of its forms, rising to live a life of purity and faithfulness. By God's grace in an empty tomb, life still comes forth from the death of sin. And whenever it does, the kingdom of God advances in our very lives. One of my favorite contemporary Christian singers is a man called Michael Card. And he has a wonderful song about the freedom we find in the things we leave behind. For you see, Holy Scripture is just filled with people who repented, leaving things behind, rose from the death of sin to a new life in Christ. Let me give you just a, just a few examples. Peter, James, and John, they, they left behind a fishing business and found freedom and new life in becoming fishers of men. Mary Magdalene left behind a life of immorality as a prostitute. And she was delivered from seven demons by our Lord, rising from demons and the death of sin to find new life as a follower of Jesus Christ. Zacchaeus, he left behind a life of greed and corruption in his tax collecting business, and he found new life in repentance, restoring those he had wronged by robbing them through taxes and then living a life of generosity. Oh, he still was a Roman tax collector, but now he did that honestly as a redeemed child of Christ. Yes, my dear friends in Christ, life comes forth from death. New life comes forth as we die to sin, confessing, repenting, and being graced by Christ, and rising to new life in Christ by the power and leading of His Holy Spirit. And so Martin Luther, 500 years ago or so, wrote in the small catechism, God's kingdom comes and God's will is done when, and I quote, God breaks and hinders every evil plan and purpose of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature, and strengthens and keeps us firm in his word and faith until we die. So I ask you again, are you you looking for the kingdom of God in your day-to-day life? Do you really want new life to come forth in your life by dying to Satan, sin, and the ways of this world daily and rising by the power of Christ to walk in God's ways? I certainly hope the answer is yes for each and every one of you. For I'll share with you that I have seen many people in my years of ministry rise from the death of their own sins to new life in Christ. I've seen a woman die to sexual sins and rise to a new life, bearing six children and seeking to be a faithful mother and wife. I've seen a man who struggled with alcohol, struggled with sinful partying, rise to the new life of a sober life. Now living life for others, even serving in our food pantry back at the Lutheran Church of St. John in Quincy. I've seen many marriages marred and flawed by sin and infidelity, raised up from unfaithfulness and restored to a new life of forgiveness, grace, and faithfulness. Yes, my dear friends in Christ, these things happen because of Christ who brought forth life from the death of sin and bestows upon us the new life found in his cross and empty tomb. Finally, and and perhaps most importantly in our day and age, are you looking for the ultimate coming of the kingdom of God? Are you just hoping that things get a little bit better here on earth? Are you looking forward 
to the grand day of resurrection or just kind of muddling through day by day? Are you looking forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come? Or simply living life dismayed by the sin and death and destruction that's all around us in this world? You see, my dear friends in Christ, if there were no day of resurrection, if there were no Easter, if our Lord Jesus Christ did not literally rise from the dead, bringing forth life from death, we would be destined to live on this dying world without hope. Without Christ's resurrection, there would be no end to wars and rumors of wars. There would be no end to cancers and heart disease and dementia and abilities of all kinds. Without Christ's resurrection, there would be no end to financial struggles no end to the fiscal inequities of our world and the problems of poverty and homelessness. Without Christ and Easter, there would be no end to politics and corruption and divisiveness and self-serving people in positions of authority. Without Christ's resurrection, there would be no end to bigotry, hatred, injustice, and animosity. Without Christ's resurrection, death would be the final word on each one of our lives. Yet, my dear friends in Christ, all of those things and those are, words are not the final words on our life. For Christ is risen. He is risen Alleluia. Amen, which means this is most certainly true. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, He brought forth life from death. And His victory is something for each one of us to live in each and every single day of our lives. We are people of the resurrection. We live in hope. We share the hope we have in Christ when people lament the happenings in our nation and world. We have certain hope in Christ of seeing our loved ones who have passed on to glory through faith in Christ. And so we comfort those in their time of grief with the hope of the resurrection. We have hope beyond all the circumstances of this life. Hope in the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. And we Christians live with joy. Because you see... Christian joy is not dependent on earthly circumstances, but it's on the joy of our salvation and the joy of what Easter truly is. Daily we live this new life, dying to sin and hopelessness and rising in life in Christ to live lives of hope, joy, and faithfulness. Dying and rising. That's our life in Christ. For our Lord Jesus still brings life from death. And even in a world where bridges collapse, workers die, terrorists wreak havoc, and we have our own struggles and afflictions, and one day we finally die, we live in both hope and joy. Because we are looking for the coming of the kingdom of God. It's really coming. It comes in our daily Christian lives. Christ comes at the end of time. And Christ our Lord, He always faithfully brings life from death. Perfect paradise awaits us on the grand day of resurrection when death will finally be swallowed up in victory forever. For Christ is risen. Is risen Alleluia. In Jesus' name, amen.
And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard our hearts and minds in that one true faith in Christ and His resurrection, living in resurrection, joy and hope under the glories of the life that's everlasting. Amen. Please stand as we join together in singing the offertory. Breathe. We confess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, I knew all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures. Set it into heaven and sit at the right hand of God. But he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as the ushers come forward to collect our tithes and offerings.
Lord, all we have is truly yours alone. A trust from you. We ask, O Lord, that you may use these tithes and offerings to assure us that your Son has risen. And because he lives, we too can arise from whatever death we are stuck in. All these things we ask in your name. Amen. Please stand for prayer. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. He lives to intercede for us before the Father. With confidence, let us present to God our petitions for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus. For the holy Christian church throughout the world, that it may be found without fault at the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For all believers in the Lord Jesus, that their lives may testify to his resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the peace of the whole world, that a spirit of respect may grow among nations and peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those in positions of public trust in all levels of government, that they may serve justice and promote the welfare and dignity of every person, let us pray to the Lord. For all who suffer because of poverty, persecution, or sickness, especially Ruth, Chris, Karen, Dick, Wendy, Michael, Margie, Anna, Jim, Eugene, Charlene, Danielle, Marlene, Rosemary, Dorothy, Janice, Marga, Artis, Noah, Guy, Mike, Jill, Janet, Vern, Kathy, Helga, June, Shirley, Sarah, and all others we name in our hearts that they may know the healing power of the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who grieve because of the death of their loved ones, that through the sure hope of the resurrection of Christ, God would wipe away the tears from their eyes and give them comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this congregation, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart, grow in loving graciously, and show forth God's glory in all that we do. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who come this day to the feast of our Lord's body and blood, that their faith may be strengthened, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying he has destroyed death, and by his rising again he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore praising you and saying... Blessed are you, Lord God of heaven and earth, for you did not spare your only Son, but gave him into death, that we might have life. Though we cannot understand your love or comprehend eternity, we lift our voices in thanksgiving and pray to you to strengthen us through this sacrament to serve as your witnesses. Give us this opportunity, use our gifts, and move us by your Holy Spirit 
to tell the news of Jesus' victory over death each day that you give us for loving service. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and we had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body which has been given for you. This do as often as you eat of it in remembrance of me. And in the same way also, after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and drink this cup, which is my blood of the new covenant, shed for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your fi coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Now may this, the very body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you from this life unto life everlasting. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. We give thanks, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, that you have refreshed us through this gift of life, forgiveness, and salvation. Strengthen us by this sacrament to announce this gracious good news, so that many may join us at the Lamb's High Feast, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Before we conclude the services, uh, just one reminder, there is an Easter breakfast for you all downstairs that's being put, in, put on by our youth group. Uh, all donations will help them go to a houseboat retreat where they will learn more about this risen Savior that we have. But as you go, receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with His favor and give you his peace. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace as you serve our living Lord.